without doubt and without not trying this full on be in the moment, leave a face and believe in himself and without doubting himself. So and when and then that's when uh he leaves the apocalypse after he has swept up. And that's his last words. He he says that because Peter's going to stay behind and um stay behind and uh he's going to want to shut the machine down that that that's collapsing the multiverse. And interesting thing is like Dr. Octavius then told uh, the downside of taking someone from another dimension that they will decay if they stay in the dimension too long. And Kingpin doesn't know this. I, uh, and, uh, like at all, because he goes to the planet anyway, and the doctor doesn't even warn him about the downside. She just says, my good news is my machine works. And that means you can uh, get all the family you want from as many dimensions as you want. So, he, she didn't tell him about the downside about taking someone from another dimension. I uh, she t- told about the whole universe collapse, saying if they don't shut down the machine, I mean, don't, if they don't shut down the machine, uh, if they don't uh, have to fix them, if they don't, like, uh, undo the process, I was like making the universe class that's caused by the machine and so I'm interfering from Miles' dimension and um kind of destroying this thing but didn't shut it off. So they need to shut it off otherwise the whole multiverse will collapse and get destroyed and forever. No life nothing exists in any universe in any earth or universe. In other words, so yeah. Um Kingpin knows that, but he doesn't know about the other thing about his friend from another dimension that can't get sucked into a dimension he's in, where it's Miles, uh, the one Miles is from. Okay, uh, seeing I went through that very thoroughly and took my time with that as much as possible. I hope I did. Uh, so, uh, Miles, uh, uh, was. Uh, and Peter, uh, when they're about to say goodbye to each other, Peter leaps into action and tries to stop Kingpin and tells Miles to shut this thing down while he, while he actually, while he, uh, keeps King, King, Kingpin busy, which, uh, is a good plan, but Miles doesn't want his Spider-Man to actually die. And Peter doesn't want Miles to die because he's, 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 he says he can't let Spider-Man die, and Miles says neither can I. And he tells, uh, "This is uh, this," and I like this. Uh, this is like the scene when uh, he. Re- this is after this, the moment when he realized that Peter finally wants kids. <laughs> Peter B. Parker, Jack Johnson, Peter Parker. This is after he gone for the chase decides that he wants kids after seeing Miles in action and seeing seeing see, see, and feeling pride and feel and getting a sense of pride uh, for being uh, from Miles doing it. And that's when he says, "I want kids." Because he was so proud of Miles succeeding as Spider-Man, and he, and he for some reason, just made him want kids. So, um, very hot woman saying that he was very brief. So, um, Peter says to Miles, "Is okay if something happens to me." This is by saying Miles is okay because after he, after Miles says he can't let Peter die. Similar, so, uh, so, um, he gets to, he, uh, gets to drop on Peter and, uh, trips him and, uh, grabs his, uh, costume and tells him he gotta go home, man. And, uh, Peter grabs, uh, Miles' hand and asks, how I know I won't mess things up this time? And he's, and uh, Miles answers, you won't. And Peter says, I get it, it's a leap of faith. <laughs> and Peter's just happy to go and as he's going back to his own dimension he says not bad kid <laughs> so uh Miles takes on the Kingpin Kingpin beats the shit out of Miles 
No, he he's, he pretty much pummels Miles after Miles gets a few uh, uh get, get, is after a while of Miles kicking the King Pink against ass. It's called sort of neck and neck for a while. Then King Pink is being Miles as Spider Man, and uh. So, uh, so he tells Miles that that he's no match for him as he's getting, as he's sucking when Miles is sucking when and uh his dad's watching the whole thing of Miles who he knows that's the same one that he, Uncle Ian was with he was the same Spider Man that's because that's the new Spider Man and um so. And he recognized him, you know, he's wearing a different costume and, uh, and taking on the kingpin. That's when he, uh, he seems like he's starting to, he's, uh, showing, cons- he's like, um, that's when he, like, sees him in action. He starts to doubt that he's not the one that killed, uh, the king that killed his brother, um, Ian, uh, Uncle Ian, uh, my father. So, um, and then he's, uh, Room for Miles, so he's room for Miles. Telling him to get up when he looks like he's going to be down for the when Peter Man looks like he's going about to deliver the final blow to him and just kill him like he did with the other Spider Man. And uh, Kingpin's basically saying, saying like, you're not so tough when you're on your own, and uh, you know this is talking, giving, talking the same stuff to Miles. He's saying, and also and by saying he's not the real Spider Man. Because the real Spider-Man wasn't even a match for him. And other words, he says the real Spider-Man wasn't even a match for him. You only, you only died just like the real Spider-Man was. The real Spider-Man can even beat me. In other words, he doesn't see him as the real deal. He sees him less than what Miles is. So uh, that's when Miles starts to uh, lose Hatter, actually. Then uh, he has his dad uh, share her mom telling him to get up because he's trying to... Because he, He's starting to hear that positivity again, and starting to feel that he, uh, his powers start to work, and gets start getting hand with powers again, and he does the soldier test that his Ian, uncle Ethan taught him that used to pick up girls, but he uses it as a wep- uh, as a as a as a he uses it to, to deliver the final bolt to Kingpin and catch him on guard. <laughs> and delivers the line that that uncle Ethan told him to love what to pick up girl, and he says. Hey, and he says, "Hey," while touching his shoulder, and uh, and he gets shot with electricity, and uh, and uh, he f- Miles webs Kingpin and throws him up to hit, hit the switch to turn off the machine, and tells Kingpin, "Hey, Kingpin, hit the green button or the red button." Uh, it was either green or red. I, I can't remember. Okay, um, I think he said green button. Oh, I see. Yeah, I think he said green button. Ninety percent sure he said green. Um, anyway, he hits the green button. Kingpin does hit the green button with his head, as it, and also destroys the. Uh, and also then, the, then uh, reality becomes stable again, and everything's getting sucked into the machine that's from the other dimensions. So Peter, I mean not Peter, Miles. Um, Morales, uh, as Spider-Man, uh, this, uh, the, takes cover, and so does his father, and all this holds on to stuff, and it just goes on for quite a while, it's actually pretty in- intense and exciting, uh, and scary at the same time, but, uh, then the, mo- the machine actually stuff is something, actually, this clogs the machine and causes it to explode when everything else, uh, gets sucked in, including the plasma machine. So... It blows up Bradley Alley's stable again. Miles' father calls Miles after he saved the day and his Spider-Man costume when he's on top of the roof and ready to swing off and uh, against his, his father's call. And that's when his father opens up more, t- opens up to Miles and says uh, that he doesn't think that Spider-Man killed his uncle, but because after seeing, after, after experiencing, well, after what he experienced, the whole Kingpin, uh, Fight, so he's not really sure that he's a uh, even a bad person or or even kills his uncle. So so he's not really mad at Spider-Man, the new Spider-Man anymore. He's actually impressed with him. <laughs> and 
kind of like him, <laughs> kind of like, like Ari, like him, you know, he doesn't know that's his son. And so, um, you know, Miles uh, has a hot, hot conversation with his dad over the phone and his Spider-Man costume on the roof where his, in the building, outside the building where his dad is outside, on the ground, uh, wrapping up the whole leftover kernels and resting them, so, uh, and, um, and, uh, so, these, that's when, uh, his father just opens up, said we could go somewhere to put up your eye and it's definitely the same place where his uncle Ian, uh, put up his eye with him, and, which was also the same place where he got the spider bite, which gave him the spider powers, whereas, so, yeah, so they go there, and this montage, nice montage, and, uh, and Peter, uh, in the montage, gets back with MJ by ringing her doorbell with her, by shooting her webs, and, uh, bringing her flowers, and, uh, the you know, other Spider-Man people just go off to, you know, see, and, uh, and find peace with themselves, and, uh, with, and, uh, by, uh, feeling this, uh, each one had this, like, empty void in their soul, but they sort of, each one of them, in a way, fill that empty void. For Miles, it's like the lack of a, it was the uh, whole, like, uh, searching for a father figure that he needed and kind of wanted because it, he, and also, like, that, that father figure that would give him that, uh, positive support. And, uh, anyway, his, Miles' actual father kind of changed for the better because he became the father that Miles needed and wants. Because of all the, uh, actions, uh, for all the film that each saw, uh, for, for, cause all these, uh, not actions like the wrong word, cause all these character, uh, actions, the story that it told, that, for all the film. And, uh, Miles is no longer afraid to say he loves his dad because, uh, he is in, in, uh, in, uh so he goes, uh, to hug his dad in Spider-Man costume after having this hot conversation over the phone with him just uh, says, uh, after, like, um, after his son says, I, 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 I love you to Miles, and, uh, he goes to hug him and press say, I love you, and say, I look forward to looking with you, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, so, uh, his father says, so do I, you know, he doesn't know he's Spider-Man, so he says, I look, but, uh, but he plays it cool, like, he's, he says, yeah, so, uh, like, he's, he's, but then he plays it cool, says, uh, and comes on plays it cool, says, I mean, I mean, might not work, uh, work with, or agree, so, you uh, Masters and everything, but uh, you, but you seem cool. He's <laughs> in other words, uh, so uh, so uh, yeah, but I look for oh, oh, so, oh, 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 so, uh, nice. He says, so, so that's when he uh, says goodbye to him and hugs his dad in the spider man costume. It's, it's weird for his dad, but it's also very hot warming for us, the audience, and for Miles because he's getting the uh, closure on the uh relationship he wanted to have with his dad and felt close enough for his dad and uh his dad uh, bought to commute but his dad uh, knew tried to leave a face on opening up and saying uh trying to say the right things to Miles and not being as high on him being more softer on, on him you know and uh so Miles swings off after everyone congratulates Miles on the, on being the despite and the audience uh the uh, crowd of the city of the New York, uh, congratulations on the Spider Man. Now, uh, Miles goes, just like takes off as Spider Man, and uh, but now it's uh, but but this is here, so that's banging on the Spider Man, and uh, and slips so, so off of the wall while standing, and says, and he says, That was on purpose, that was probably uh, that was probably uh, that was probably the takeoff, uh, even though it clearly wasn't, it seems like lost focus, um. Uh, because he got too relaxed, I guess. Uh, so, um, um, so, uh, he tries it a second time, it works, and, uh, swings off, and, uh, gives the narration that he's been spider for two days, and he's been the one and only Spider-Man in his, on his verse. And says that being a Spider-Man is a leap of faith, and anyone can be able to wear a mask. But not everyone can take the leap of faith to be Spider-Man, because that takes real guts. Because that's what Peter taught him. And also what his... In a way, his father, his actual father taught him. And, um... Miles gets a... 
gets in cont uh, gets um, Miles uh, gets called out by uh, Gwen Stacy from the multiverse and asks if Miles got some time and uh that's probably the sequels when take off left take off uh, uh, it's like it's that off and continue whatever like whatever Gwen wants to see Miles from whether it be a date or a get together as friends or actual spider superhero missions or you know, something to save a multiverse from classing again, you know? And, uh, after the credits, after the end credits, uh, we see, uh, a cameo from Spider-Man 2099, who is Spider-Man from the future in the comic, and his, like, his, he's actually called Spider-Man 29, his comic run, and, uh, Spider-Man is called Spider-Man 2099 from the comic run, and it's, it, yeah, so, uh, and, uh, he gets the brief up from his AI, Who's kind of like his sassy, bitchy girlfriend? It's a bit of a Noah, also. Uh, who the? It's I. This is based on how he touches the. the it's almost something like the dating, you know. And uh, even though that's his AI, you know, he asks like, "What happened today?" Okay, so what happened today? Give me the bad news and the good news. Uh, it, and he, he like. Uh, so he's, he asks me the good news first after she asks if he wants the good news or bad news first. Uh, so he says, good news is the multi, uh, no way. Uh, what? I can't remember which news she gave, but she said the multiverse almost collapsed, but good news is it didn't. With the bad news is that multiverse all called stopped to collapse, good news is it didn't. And also, the good news is, uh, that thing that she wanted him to work on so he could hop dimensions in between dimensions, do dimension traveling throughout dimensions. So, it, that device works. And he calls it a goober, like Pia B. Parker calls it. <laughs> and, she, and, uh, so technically, we thought, so technically we thought P.O.P. Piker from the multiverse, not Miles' dimension. It, and up until this, up until, up before this point, up before this point, we thought Miles is the old, Miles, uh, not, not Miles, uh, P.O.P. Piker, Spider-Man from the multiverse, not Miles' uh, Earth, uh, in the multiverse, it was the only one that calls, uh, everything that, something that's a, yeah, that, that's technology based, it's a goober, he calls it. <laughs> Turns out he's not the only one that calls it. It was also Biden from twenty ninety nine time and time twenty ninety nine and the uh credits in the uh scene after the end credits and uh he decides to go back from the besides from the beginning of Earth sixty seven which is basically short for nineteen sixty seven Spider Man cartoon Earth. That that's what takes place and <laughs> So he starts an argument. He starts arguing with uh, that version of Earth Spider Man. And, uh, and uh, because Spider Man from that Earth starts arguing because he sees that he's pointing to him. And he doesn't realize he started pointing first to Spider Man from that Earth. So it just sounds like that funny. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh, the, the, uh, I really like how, like, uh, the guy sounds like that, that like that spine from that time period, and so does the uh, Jake. Uh, so does uh, J. Joan Jameson. Sounds like that's Joe Jameson from that time period from the t from that TV show that lasted for two seasons, which is a great show. I'm wanting. I was thinking I was wanting to do that on my show, talk about that show because I really love that. Uh, but it's really the reason why I bring that up because it's such a great anyway, it's such great to see that. Uh, that guy, uh, that version of Spider-Man is still active as Spider-Man and the Mon era, so, and interact with all the Spider-Man. I kind of want to see him, um, <laughs> I kind of want him to be the, uh, main character for one of the upcoming Spider-Verse films, or get him uh, his own standalone film for, because I just like that version of Spider-Man so much from 1967th cartoon, because that, that to me, like, that is, oh, that, that, that Spider-Man was always so funny, has such heart to him, and, uh, Always made you laugh and always made you cry because, because he was just, I, he just like had the, the how was, I, the, his character was written 
for the time period just felt right for Spider-Man uh, in the setting it was set in. So, um, I, I always want to see a Spider-Man movie with that Spider-Man uh, as the main focus, you know, and main, main character, you know? Um, uh, th- that hasn't happened yet, but I hope that happens within this universe, in this universe, this world that it sets up. And I hope we get, like, a Avengers movie that takes place in, in this, uh, that takes place in this multiverse of the, these, this, in this universe, uh, somewhere in one of the Earths, you know? And I really like how, like, uh, the film looks. It looks like a comic book lily rod for, to, to life because of how slow images, fast images, and, um, awkward, uh, focus images and in-focus images, and I have a bunch of these different, uh, images from, uh, comic books. And, you know, as, like, how, like, and sometimes the animation will, like, won't move, move smooth, but won't move, uh, smooth and, uh, won't, but will move too smooth or just somewhere in the middle. Like, when I say too smooth, I mean too fast and, and stuff. But I like how, like, it mixes the pa- the pacing of the animation, the focus of the animation when you, because sometimes the animation looks out of focus, but I realize it's kind of an intentional thing because this is what kind of looks like a comic book. Well, this kind of looks like a comic book with the whole the bright colors and the, how the animation set. And I think that was the intention. I got, I got that the intention. I mean, and I think it works for the, the to the advantage even using the comic book panels. Uh I think this is the first comic book since uh uh that works uses the comic book panels without it feeling like it's uh you know. Where it feels, you know, completely natural and not sticking out at all. But, uh, this for any comic book in general, I mean, I'm not saying the other ones didn't do well. I'm saying they didn't do as well as this movie bring the comic book panels to life on the big screen or any small screen or something, you know? That's what I'm trying to say, okay? And for all those reasons why... And this is all these reasons why this is the Marvel movie MCU film I will never get. Because this is, it's just, I mean, yeah, uh, and that's why I want to, like, um, looking forward for them be more, uh, Mar- I really want them to do all these Marvel characters on the big screen, uh, in this universe, because I feel like we never got the Marvel characters from Marvel, from classic Marvel comics, we got the, uh, this Frankenstein where Transvendus transvestite shit. That's the MCU. Is this, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of, it's something. It's like, it's like a Frankenstein zombie transvestite. It's, it's, it's not, it doesn't sound right. Um, I didn't want to use the regular transvestite because I didn't, I don't think I was when I said that well, I realized that could have offended transvestites and uh so I'm just basically saying this is this is basically a zombie vampire tux like the movie tux transvestite that the MCU is. That's the kind of what the MCU gives that and that it's it was on the human lump human lump bees human the centipede level of this wrong. It sounds, doesn't it? Um the MCU movies as a whole, anyway, when they're all together, yeah, it's just, it just doesn't, something, it just, like, I, I don't like the MCU as a whole, but I like the, uh, standalone movies, majority of them, but not when they're all together, because, it's, uh, uh not, be- because, like, they have three bad ones, I think, uh, the Incredible Hulk from, with Edward Noir and the Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man movie, like, from 2000, uh, Captain Marvel from 2019, I think it's from, or no, 2018, I think it's from. Uh, yes, um, uh, with Brie Larson. So, and even when they're good, they don't look they don't look healthy looking looking films. They look like these weird. Uh, Dawn of the Jackson Jackson is Dawn of the Dead. Corpses look to it, but a, it's mixed 
with the idea, uh, mixed with the whole if there was a real human centipede thing in real life uh, spliced together. It, it, that's what the color looks like to me. It just, but it worse by a million percent uh, worse. Uh, Two point looks gross looking and uh, scary looking and uh, just wrong. Like in every definition of the word of those three words that I listed off where the color grading is, it looks to me. The ones that, this the MCU ones. All the ones before Far From Home, Spider-Man From Home, and the old kind of Spider-Man Far From Home. So that takes place in the MCU. I, I, I known them. Spider-Man Far From Home, as right now, is the last MCU film project. And I think I hear they're going to come out with their remastered movies, uh, remastered all the MCU projects and movies by going back and fixing the color and the shadows too and everything that to make it look right. And if that's true, if that ever, when that happens, uh, it's only happens, but I guess they got to be because of the whole pandemic, COVID-19 stuff and shit. Uh, so, um, don't know when that's going to happen, but when that's going to happen, I'm probably going to review each, uh, Marvel movie again, <laughs> because I like, I like my films not looking haunting looking, the stuff of nightmares, well, night terrors, actually, and it is what I meant to say, not nightmares, which is actually worse, um, night terrors are caused by trauma, so, uh, and I have had night 